coaches Russ Brown with Kentucky today. Could you give us a sense of uh, what you've been doing during this shutdown? Yeah, well, <clears throat> you know, a, a big part of it is, um, you know, the, the situation. It, it, it's all of this is new for everybody. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's just, you know, how best can we deal with this situation? You know, and so it, it's learning how to do a lot more stuff virtually with our players, uh, staying in contact with our staff, um, uh, becoming very um, efficient with the computer nowadays. Um, you know, and, and one thing that it has afforded all of us is uh, family time and, and being around those that, that, you know, normally we're not, not able to be around. I'm, I'm able to have um, be around my kids all day now. And in saying that, I, I definitely have a greater appreciation for what my wife deals with on a daily basis and also my kids' kindergarten teachers. <laughs> Next question for Coach. Coach, this is Ken Spencer with WHAS 11. How much contact do you have with your guys either on a daily basis or a couple times a week? I mean, how, how often do you try to reach out and I guess you probably do some, some virtual stuff like this or some video conference and stuff with them as well. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it got past where we can have um, virtual meetings now with our guys. And, um, you know, we do that. I do that with my guys uh, three times a week. Um, we'll do it on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. And, um, you know, it, it's been very good. And I think not from the standpoint of just, talking football or just discussions with the guys, but it allows the guys to have an opportunity to see each other. And uh, cause that's what I can sense when we're on these calls together is that I, I can feel that sincerity of the guys missing each other and being around each other. And so these calls that we're having with the guys, it, it, it's very beneficial because it allows those guys to, this is the best way that we can communicate and still be able to see each other. And so I think it has great benefit to it. Um, you know, and then, you know, we're also able to, to meet with the guys. And, you know, we were fortunate that we, we were able to get seven practices in. And so in one of our meetings, we went back and watched our last practice. And so and it's, it's the, the technology that we have out there is, is, is affording us opportunities to still be able to connect with our players. Um, but more important in the football aspect of it, just us staying connected um, with each other, just period. Next question from Coach. Hey, Coach, Coach this is Cameron. Matt McGavick with uh, I've got the Sports question. Illustrated. Oh, go ahead, Cameron. Go ahead, Matt. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Coach Leverett, Cameron from Courage Journal. Just, I'm, Mikhail had mentioned earlier this week um, just kind of about the social media posts and the, the workouts you guys are all doing from players posting them on the coaches posting them on there just what does that do for you think morale or even motivation for the guys just to see that even the coaches and every player is still getting their workouts in as much as they can you know i, I think it's a um you know coach seriano started all that and it's a big part of just holding all of us accountable uh, for what we're doing each day um you know it's still trying to have a routine uh, a normal routine one of uh, you know these guys when they're here on campus it's a um, it's very regimented and, and you know and, and now these guys are way but we're still trying to have that and have the guys where they're accountable and and posting that's our ways of those guys seeing each other work and 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 being accountable with one another and um, the response has been really good I've been embarrassed a little bit of, of sharing some of my uh, workouts and posts with uh, how bad I'm out of shape but uh, it's it's been good, you know, and it, and it's and none of it is. I mean, this is a very serious situation that we're all dealing with. Uh, but this kind of for our football team and coaches, it kind of allows us to connect with each other. Coach Next question Mark yeah. Baker, uh, from the uh, Crunchstone.com. I'm I'm wondering about the acclimation period once guys get back, like. 
how how much time does an entire football team need to physically get ready, you know, as a team, uh, you know, to get the season started on time or delayed or whatever may happen. But how much time will you guys need to physically acclimate back so that there aren't a rash of injuries or anything like that? Yeah, no, that's uh, it's something that, that, that obviously we're in discussions with. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's nice to be able to say, well, you know, if you had – 60 days you feel like you got a good opportunity to make sure the guys are in shape um they're honed in and, and ready to go for the start of training camp uh, but the thing is you, you know we we have no idea and, and you know the, the best the best thing for us well the biggest thing is is whatever it is we're going to have to adjust uh we'll have to adjust you know, how we're going into the season and kind of see how many days we're going to be able to get uh, to go into it. But it will be totally different than anything we've done before uh, in years past. Um, you know, it's kind of like I remember back in the day you used to show up uh, for training camp. And training camp was intended really to get you in shape for the season. And uh, I'm sure a lot of that's going to be the case this year. Uh, but you know, it's, it's just how, you know, the, the, the thing about it is everybody's having to deal with it. And so it's it's not just certain teams or certain conferences. Um, we're all in this together and um, we got to, to, to make the most out of it. And, and whatever comes of it and whatever time we get, you know, we're, we're going to have to be uh, very good in, in making our adjustments um, so we can still uh, go forward with that football season. And be able to play at a high level. Hey, Coach, this is Brandon Gavick with uh, Sports Illustrated. I, um, how profound of an impact has this extended dead period had on recruiting? I assume you've had to probably get a little bit creative with how you contact these recruits and maybe uh, reschedule a lot of visits. Yeah, it, it is. Um, you know, and a difficult thing, you know, I've been speaking with scouts also from the NFL. You know, with everybody, everything being canceled from pro days as well. And I was telling some of them that, um, you know, a conversation I was having with uh, Coach Satterfield the other day. You know, we found we signed five offensive linemen last year. Uh, two of those guys, one of them uh, we had at camp. And he, that and that's that's where we saw the kid. Um, he had a great camp. And we, uh, we offered him a scholarship, and he ended up signing with us. And then another kid, I was fortunate enough to go out and see him, watch him practice, kind of just learn a lot more about him. And so now we don't have that. And so from our standpoint, that, that's going to make it uh, difficult because, you know, a big piece of it, you want to make sure that it's a good fit and also that you want to bring in kids of a very high character into your program and so, what the, you know, you're not allowed and, and can't go out and um, see these kids and watch them work, you know, what kind of work ethic they have. And so a lot of the stuff that we're having to do now is, you know, really utilizing our time as a staff, uh, going back and evaluating these kids and uh, spending a lot of time with these kids, you know, texting them, um, th th with them calling us. And trying to build those relationships, um, you know, w without the face-to-face -face contact that you would have if a kid came up on an unofficial visit. And so it, it's trying to find creative ways in which you can still connect to these recruits. Coach Next question. With WHAS 11 again. Um, quick question. Obviously, your kids, they want to get in their work, but when they go home, a lot of times, you know, they, they want to put in work with their buddies or people they know from around their area. How are you communicating about making sure they get their stuff in, but still kind of managing the, the, the whole social distancing thing? Yeah, I know when we have these meetings, like, and obviously we're sending our guys, you know, workouts, things that they can do um, in their driveway, uh, Coach Mike has come up with a great plan with all that. And, uh, you know, and I send guys workouts that they can also do from a drill standpoint, um, you know, with just stuff around the house. Um, but we make a, a, a point and, and making sure the guys understand that the guidelines that are being put out there with the social distancing. 
and to not take that lightly. Uh, like if, if whoever is under your roof, um, those family members, those are the guys and, and the people that you can have contact with. And, and so you got to stay away from meeting up with, with your buddies and going to the high school or out there uh, on the field together and really just really make, making sure that, that we're being very responsible and following the guidelines that are, are set forth by um, uh, uh, administrators, um, the, 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 the CDC, the president, and just so we can do whatever we can um, to overcome this. Coach, how, Coach this is how Aaron Matus with things? WDRB. Just wondering, one of the only things we have in the near future to look forward to is the draft. What have you heard from Makai? What kind of situation is he in right now? And, uh, you know, what's he up to these days? You know, he's still down in Dallas training. Um, obviously, uh, I think all you guys probably saw what he did at the Combine. And um, he's attracting a lot of attention. And uh, pretty much everybody's got him, um, you know, as being, I think, the draft um, – most people have like four tackles out there as being the top tackles in the draft. And um, he's one of the four. And um, obviously that's always a premium position with NFL teams. And, you know, he's, he's working hard. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a lot different, um, totally different because you don't have pro days and he doesn't get to go on those pretty much campuses and visit with teams uh, but he's doing really well. I was texting him back and forth before I joined this call, uh, just checking in on him, see how he's doing. He's in great spirits. Um, you know, and I, I think that and – I, and I tell – and I've been in contact with a lot of scouts, uh, a lot of other um, teams, media outlets um, with different teams, and there's a lot of interest around there for him, uh, rightfully so. And um, – I, I tell people all the time, whoever gets him, they're, they're going to be very happy. And not only is he a um, a great player, but it, he's a, he's an even better person. And uh, he's handling it the right way with his workouts and everything like that. And you know, it's just it's, it's difficult for for those guys that that's you know the the draft is usually something that's a pretty unique experience. I was able to experience that with Garrett Bradbury last year at his house with his family members and, and close friends. And uh, that was a special moment. And so the, obviously that's going to be taken away from some of these kids, but nothing's going to take away the fact that he's going to be able to, to live that dream and to be able to, to see that through. And so um, I can't be more proud of him and, and, and what he's been out there doing and, and look forward uh, to the draft getting here and, and seeing his journey unfold. Coach, Russ Coach Brown again. How uh, did you feel things were going for the offense when the shutdown came? You know, I was I was extremely happy, happy, and um, I thought the guys and, and Coach Satterfield and I we, we both talked about this. You know, the great thing about the bowl game and our bowl game was pretty late in the year, and um, you know, I, I thought that there there was a, a ton of retention from the guys from the bowl game and what we were able to install with the guys um, was so much more than what we did last year at this time. And um, they obviously they retained a lot of the information and just the, the way the guys, I mean, to me, I, th I thought that we were practicing and playing at a, a very high level and, and our practices were even better than the ones that we were having going into the bowl week. And because, uh, you know, during that bowl week, I mean, that's pretty much the peak of your season because that's towards the end. Um, you know, they you are who you are going into that game. And, and I think our guys, they haven't missed the beat. And uh, we were really having a good spring and, and seeing some of those young guys come in and what they were able to do and, and contribute, um, seeing the guys step up from the guys that we have lost. Uh, due to graduation and 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 like Makai who's going into the draft and seeing those guys develop and uh, we were very very pleased with where we were going uh, uh, with spring ball with the way it was going. Next question, Cameron, guys. Again. 
Um, so it's just a qu- two, I guess a two part question here. One, I guess were there three or four guys, hope, I hope, hopefully you can name three or four guys from the offense um, that stood out to you over those seven practices. And on the flip side, I know you don't watch the defense religiously, but you go against them kind of who were three or four guys on the defensive end that stood out to you as well. Yeah. Um, you know, offensively, you know, it, it was very happy. I, I was very, I mean, I thought Malik has, he, he's playing at a very high level. And um, obviously that's a, um, a name and, and somebody that everybody is, is used to seeing. Um, and I thought that um, the, the, uh, the guys I was very impressed with, like a Renato Brown, a guy that redshirted last year, who's really stepping up right now at the right tackle spot, uh, running with the ones and doing a really good job with it. And um, we were all very pleased with with how well he was practicing. And um, also, you know, seeing Adonis Boone, um, who's stepping in uh, Makai's shoes right now. And I thought that both those guys running with the ones, um, you know, it, it's year two in the system. And so the, the the guys understand what it is that we're wanting, not only from a um, a play design, but just the effort and the execution of it, and how we're executing it. And so that's that's been so nice this year, um, you know. And and so th- those are two guys because obviously when you look at us offensively, those are really the two spots. Um, obviously, we lost Seth. And a couple other skill guys, but you know, you lost those two starters up front, and um, it was really good to see Renato and and Adonis having a good spring so far. And um, you know, and and for us, the 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 other part of it is, you know, some of those freshmen. I thought that, you know, Dez's younger brother, Christian Fitzpatrick, he's a big receiver that made some plays out there, and and and. Is a uh, very similar to Dez, just a very unselfish player, and and will do whatever's asked of it. And Braden Smith, that came in and was playing slot for us. Uh, I know you guys saw, I think on Twitter, um, or somebody posted that picture of him and that that one-handed catch that he made, and and so he was doing very well um, as well with it, you know, and and, and defensively, um, you know, so that's offense defensively. You know, just overall, the how fast the guys are playing over there, and it's same thing like for us offensively. Just uh, the the retention is there, and, and just seeing those guys, just and how fast they were playing, they know the system. Um, Jared Goldwire, Goldwire was having a really good spring playing nose in there, and I thought that he was really flying around and, and making plays, and uh, very very. Like I mean, he's he was he was doing really well, and um, you know, so so happy with that. I mean, just the competition that we were seeing between him and Cole. I mean, that's that 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 was fun to watch, and those guys pushing each other. Uh, Tom Montgomery, the linebacker, making plays, and so just overall, just I mean, it, it was it was competitive, and just the speed of it, and you know, the more comfortable you are with something. And I know said it, it's been said a lot, but, you know, it's the same coaching staff. These guys are around it. The more you know something, the faster you can play with it. And so and that, and you see that all the way across the board with a lot of the positions. Aaron made us from WDRB. Coach, you've mentioned the lack of the pro days a couple of times. How creative are guys going to have to get here to try to get noticed? You know, that's uh, – you know, I, that's a tough question. You know, I, I just don't know with the guidelines we have with social distancing now, like what what can be done with that? Um, you know, and I just think about the guys that we have that, that I, I think back to myself, pro day was something that was um, very important to me. I had a very good pro day. And obviously your film is your film and that speaks volumes. Um, but the pro day, I mean, it gives you that opportunity to go out there and showcase that athletic, um, the, the athleticism that you have. And, and some of these guys aren't going to have that now. And, uh, you know, I think of Tyler Haycraft, he comes to mind automatically with it because of the season he had, and he'll be a guy that's probably going to be asked to play a different position in the NFL, but just getting that opportunity for that. And, uh, 
know, I think you'll see a lot more guys being drafted from the combine this year uh, because the, the teams were able to see it. And, um, you know, I, th I think obviously when the NFL opens up, uh, those rookie mini camps are going to be important because a lot of that's probably going to be inviting a bunch of these guys that, that teams are feeling good about that they want to see during pro days. Uh, but it's it's difficult. I've seen a couple of guys post those virtual workouts, uh, which I think is very creative. And um, but, you know, I just don't know what you can do with it as far as with the uh, the guidelines we have with the social distancing right now. Another question for Coach. Coach, this is Aaron from WDRB again with a silly question. We've been asking people about their backgrounds in these Zoom meetings, and I see the uh, bookends and the horse picture and some sort of creature directly behind your head as well. Is that our whole animal theme in the study? You uh, you guys will have to ask. I've, I've had to uh, overtake my wife's office area here in the house, so you guys would have to uh, send a, a DM to, to Meredith and um, ask her about the theme in here. Uh, but that's uh, interesting that you pointed that out and uh, looking at that myself. Not that savvy yet with Zoom or some of these virtual meetings to where I can get those nice backgrounds on the back yet, but that's something I'll definitely look forward to uh, getting in the background. Dwayne, this is, is uh, Ken Spencer with, with uh, WHAS 11. Hey, what's, uh, what's the next step for this offense? You know, the next step for it, I think, is just, you know, being better at execution. Um, I think the guys understand the type of effort that we want them to play at, you know, the type of speed we want them to play at. Um, but, you know, there, there are certain times in the season or, or certain games that you saw the execution wasn't quite there. And so those guys just continue to take that ownership and, and, and wanting to be the best offense in the conference. And how are you going to do that? we got to execute. And, and so to me, it's, it's just the continuing developing that and letting those guys take that ownership that they're having in the offense and, you know, we had some um, unit meetings and, you know, a lot of guys stepping up in those meetings and being vocal and holding guys accountable. And uh, when you have that, you, you feel very comfortable that, you know, we're getting to where we need to be right now with, with these players really taking ownership and what they're putting out there and knowing that it, it's about them and it's about their preparation and what they're putting out there on the field for people to see. And so I, we're, we're heading in the right direction with that. And it's, it was very promising seeing that uh, when we got back with the kids during spring ball this year. Anything else for Coach? Coach, this is Matt McGavick again with Sports Illustrated. You said you had to get creative with some of the recruiting uh, in Waco, having the dead period extended. What are some of the tactics you guys have had to resort to? You know, obviously, um, we got a, a really good um, recruiting department that, you know, we, we, we come up with, you know, what everybody else does with the graphics and, and things of that nature. But, you know, our, our big thing is when we try to get kids on campus, um, we, we feel like we have a lot to show here at Louisville. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great place, game day environment. Our fans are very passionate, and it's great to show them that, uh, but also just showing them the, the city and uh, showing them our, our, our beautiful campus. And so a lot of the stuff that we're doing is, you know, videos that coaches have may, may have taken during some of these unofficial visits or official visits throughout the year of, showing them what their their apartment's going to look like. You know, we're trying to make it as, as virtual as we can where these kids can see what their apartment's going to look like. Um, you know, what, what the stadium looks like coming out into a game. And just doing different avenues. Uh, we're, we're trying to make it accessible for these kids to kind of get that feel for what it's like to, to come out into Cardinal Stadium, but also to be a, a student here at the University of Louisville. And um, just using a lot of the, um, you know, the, the different things that the university has set up for virtual tours also, 
And, uh, you know, just everything that we can as a staff, if it's all of us, um, you know, talking to the parents, but it's about relationships with us. It's like that with our players now currently. And um, it's, it's genuine. And I think that what we're trying to do now is, is really build those relationships with those kids, but also the parents as well. Anything else for Coach? Yeah, Coach Cameron, Cameron again from the Courage Journal. I had a question earlier in this. You had mentioned kind of you were a little embarrassed to post your workout video. Um, I guess, one, I guess, when did you – what was that like to first post that? And two, just what are those conversations like between you guys as coaches? Because I know you guys like to have fun with each other a little bit as well. <laughs> we definitely like to, to pick uh, pick on each other a lot if anybody's been around us. Uh, but it, 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 it was all wholesome and just – it's fun. Like, uh, obviously, like, you know, Coach Sapp posted a picture of him running some hills the other day, so we all had fun with that and – um, I got made fun of a lot with my bicycle ride with, with me trying to talk during it and, um, how winded I was, but, and also the, the, the look of the, the, the bicycle helmet I was wearing. And, uh, so it, it, it's all fun, but at the same time, I mean, that's, that's how we are and that's how we interact with each other when we are together. And so it gives us an opportunity, uh, cause I mean, we're a staff that, when we get out of the facilities, we're not a staff that goes their their own in separate ways. We're a staff that spends a lot of time together outside of uh, the facilities and together as families. And so it's a it's a way for us to stay connected, just like we are with our kids. Um, and it, it it's it's fun. It, it it fills that void of us not being around uh, with each other every day. Last question, Dwayne. The other day. You know, Mikhail said he wanted to really focus on being a more of a vocal leader and obviously still continuing to work on his, his accuracy. I know it was just seven practices, but did you see him take steps forward in, in that department? Yes, I, I have. Um, I've seen him, you know, and you, you kind of just – you stand back and you observe certain aspects of practice and just kind of see how the guys – always like to see how they communicate with each other. You know, if somebody makes a mistake, is is the, are any of the players, you know, trying to to correct them or you know like holding them accountable? And and I thought that Malik was doing a great job of doing that, and you could see that the players are, you know, people gravitate towards that. And you know, obviously the quarterback position is going to naturally hold that leadership um, that that you want in a team and on an offense. Um, but Malik is doing a good job of, of rallying everybody, of, of getting everybody to stay focused, of, of understanding what, what, what do we need to get here. And, um, and, you know, and also encouraging the guys, you know, congratulating the guys making good plays. And, and so I, I see a, a – I mean, he's, he's doing a great job with it. His, the, the, the practices that we were able to have with him and, and seeing him out of there on the field and – it was it was fun to watch and fun to see and and um, he is definitely going in the right direction and and, and all that. All right, guys, appreciate everybody joining us today. Thanks, Coach, for his time, and uh, look forward to see you guys pretty soon.